After almost a month, the 2022 FIFA World Cup is coming to an end. This Sunday, defending champions France will take on Messi in Argentina to see who is going to claim the most prized trophy in soccer. Joining me again to preview this is Jeff Reuter of The Athletic. Jeff, you're back for a third time. We might as well put you on payroll after this. Uh, thanks for joining <laughs> Call us. Call it a hat trick. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Glad to be be here. Before we get to talking about the final, just overall, what have your overall thoughts been about this World Cup and where does it stack up when it's compared to others? Yeah, I think that there were a lot of concerns about the time of year and whether or not players would be in good fitness. Usually, of course, the tournament takes place in the summer. But most players who are going to be playing it, who are playing their trade in Europe and South America, would therefore be in their off season for their clubs. So usually they come in with just kind of a regeneration. But for this tournament, the quality of play has been very good. I think you've seen it in the group stage, especially when you saw a tremendous amount of uh, upsets and, you know, knockouts and surprises, uh, you know, the first time in a long time where not a single team won all three of their group stage games. It shows that the game is developing in North America, in Africa, in other nations that are usually kind of overlooked. If you look historically uh, at a world cup. Now, I think that there's also the flip side of it where it's been very hard to focus on the soccer with this tournament. And I think that that is very much FIFA's own doing. I think that that goes back to their initial decision to host this in Qatar, uh, the methods of the the Supreme Committee and, and, you know, kind of the about face the day before the tournament, suddenly going back on their promises and removing alcohol from stadiums, which, you know, upset sponsors, including Budweiser, who's one of the largest financial benefactors for FIFA. Uh, th there's also been some difficulties in terms of fans getting into stadiums, attendance, uh, and just, you know, human rights issues that go above and beyond anything involved that we've talked about involving sponsors so uh yeah i mean like i think that this will be remembered you know for some really good tournament play i think it'll yeah, be remembered yeah. for some really strong games but it'll be impossible to look at this tournament without talking about off-field issues yeah on the pitch it's been nothing but quality but i think i'm selfish and i i represent a lot of people where i'm like i don't want the world cup to go down in the fall again there's nothing like watching soccer in new york city on a sunday fun day having a great time yeah. with your mates uh, but let's get into the game because it's two pretty even teams. Uh, how do you see these two teams attacking each other? Yeah, I, I think that it's a, it's a it's a very interesting case study where the the, the strengths of one team usually play into the weaknesses of the other. And so there's going to be a lot of chess at play, basically, with this one. Look, for France, a lot of it goes through Kylian Mbappe, right? He's he's currently the best attacker in the world on current form, in my opinion. Uh, certainly the best goal scorer on current form who's in this tournament because Erling Holland and Norway didn't make it. But uh, they will be able to play through. And if Argentina focuses too much on Mbappe, they have options like Olivier Giroud, all-time leading goal scorer for France. They have Antoine Griezmann, who's played an incredibly selfless, very good role for France in this tournament compared to what he was doing in 2018. Uzman on Dembele, um, also a really strong contender, and plenty of young players off the bench who are able to come in and change the game. Uh, they also like to overlap on the left side with left back Teo Hernandez, who scored in the semifinal. The issue with Hernandez and his width, which allows Mbappe to drift in, if he's caught too far forward, Lionel Messi has plenty of real estate to operate in on the right side from the reverse on a counterattack. And so it'll be interesting because France will need to change how their approach has been this entire tournament because of Lionel Messi. Now on the other side of it, Argentina, of course, everything goes through Messi, but other teammates have stepped up more. There's a little bit more interplay around the box uh, to imply that there's some confident players. Lataro Martinez got his goal in the penalty kick shootout, of course. Um, but Julian Alvarez has been one of the revelations of the tournament, Manchester City's other big summer signing who's been stuck on the bench so uh, you know I think this could be a game where the attacking talent on hand does suggest that this could be another high scoring affair which we would all love to see but knowing how World Cup finals often go it's decided by one goal it wouldn't be a surprise if each team has stymied each other in opposite ways and it just comes down to who's able to strike first Messi or Mbappe all right those are the strengths now what about the weaknesses what weaknesses does each team have that could possibly be exploited that, uh, that, that overcommitting on the left is going to be crucial um, on, on the French side. I think, again, the, the imbalance, this is a team that likes to play with four defenders. And so when you have one of them pushed all the way forward, especially one of your wide guys, you have to shift your center backs over. And that leaves more space for Alvarez. That leaves more space for whoever starts on the left wing for Argentina. It gives a lot of flexibility in the third on the break. Argentina has been a really tough team to break down in this tournament, but uh, they don't have that same high-end center back as Rafael Varane, for example, with France. They don't have somebody who you can confidently say is going to win every single header against Giroud, is going to be able to keep up with his movement, is able going to be able to not get spun around in circles like a traffic cone uh, against Kylian Mbappe. So I think that the center back pairing 
um, which has been okay for Argentina. These are players who have moved on from big clubs because they haven't really come up in big moments. Uh, so I think that that's going to be a big area for France is they're just going to want to move it centrally. They're going to be able to be the aggressors, control the ball and everything like that. But again, the strengths and the weaknesses are so compatible with the two teams that it'd be really surprising to see them both playing the way that they've played in every single game of this tournament, given what they know about each other heading into this final. All right, we've talked about the team play. Now we got to get into some individual play. Let's talk about the legend, Messi. This probably could be his last World Cup. You know, I love a fairy tale ending. So would a win <laughs> solidify Messi? as the greatest of all time. In the chatter here, Jeff. Oh, it's, it's already over for me. <laughs> I, I don't understand what the question is anymore because I think if you look at his body of work in this tournament in particular, look, it, it's one of the beauties and frustrations of this sport is that one great player is almost never capable of just wrestling away a tournament, especially in the modern game where it's also tactical, where it's teams playing as collectives. It's not really a player dribbling on the ball. Messi is kind of the last of a dying breed of player who has given that freedom to just do what he does best and the team will figure it out around him uh, i think that when you look at his longevity when you look at his ability to impact both internationally and with his clubs barcelona and paris saint germain these days uh nobody's been able to do it have a career quite like him maradona's peak pele's peak were about 10 to 12 years johan cruyff's was about 8 to 10 uh you know the the, the next tier of greats uh ronaldo cristiano ronaldo for that matter ronaldinho uh, all of them had shorter shelf lives in terms of this high level impact messi is still doing it as he has been since 2006 to me that makes him the goat you know, I watched a viral video of him getting kind of emotional when the reporter was telling him what he means to the world when it yeah. comes to soccer. Truly a GOAT moment. Uh, you want him to go out on top. Jeff, we had you on these three times, man. You've been nothing but great. We thank you for uh, taking the time and joining us. And, uh, again, just, just thank you, man, for coming on and uh, giving us this knowledge when it comes to the World Cup. Yeah, of course, man. Happy to help, and uh, thanks for following along. It's been a it's been a hell of a tournament, and so uh, you know, enjoy it. Hope you're able to get out and enjoy this one. Uh, I know that with your Giants moving, maybe you've got a little bit more free time yeah. leading into that window. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a blast. This is going to be truly. It's shaped up to be one of the best finals in World Cup history.